You guys. Oh, wait. On you guys. Time out on you guys. Okay. Re you guys. Larez test piece. Take one. Mark it. Larez? It is. This one and this one are Larez. The white and the red are from Larez. Susanna Danks. I think I'm saying it right this time. Thank you so much to her and Laura for getting me these pieces of, nope, um, these, well, what word? Pigments. These pigments, right. thanks, yeah. They're epoxy pigments, focus. They're epoxy pigments. This one is angel white. This is sassy red. And this is sassy, sassy, sassy. Sassy red. And they are pigment paste, they're super thick. Like, you'll see. I'm not gonna put my finger in there. Got it. And so those are going to be the main colors because we want to see how they work out. This is also Susie D, our little Australian mascot. She sent it to us and um, she's our friend now. I'm going to see how Cujo will react to him. He's probably going to either freak out or not be bothered. That's his only two modes. We're also going to include Mayron because it's one of our favorite golds. Also, we're going to try the silver soon. And we're using Whale. This was countertop. Nope. Uh, the concrete. Distinctive concrete designs. Yeah. Oh, it was on the back. <laughs> This shade is called Whale. I don't know that. Yeah, we used it on that big red one. Yeah, I loved it. And it's pretty awesome. So we're going to see how these different um, thicknesses of paints react with each other. And I'm super excited because white pigment paste is supposed to be like the cell queen. So we're going to see between the gold and the white which usually sell up like crazy. Who wins? Battle Royale. Oh, also, um, the resin that we're using is basically honey because it's cold out. And it is... It is not cold out. It, we, it I needed cold, a it's coat. It's cold in like Wisconsin or somewhere like <laughs> where it's... We needed hoodies today snowy. in Texas and it's spring. It's in the 60s today, isn't it? That's not cold. Oh, yes it is. Um, you know so many people watch us from like northern states and they're like, girl, cold is three and a half inches of stuff. Deb has like, she said it's a beautiful day today. It's t-shirt weather, only one inch of snow. We're supposed to get three and a half tomorrow. Oh. Countertop Epoxy FX is the resin that we're using today. I will link all the materials that we're using in the description box below. I just wanted to say thank you again to Miss Danks and Miss Laura for sending us these beautiful pigments and powders. We have a lot to test over the next few days. Um, I'm super excited about these as well. It's taking everything in me not to throw it all into one big painting, but. And, uh, there's another Susie, right? Yes. We know a few Susies, including my mom. We want to thank Miss Judy. Blue, which is always <laughs> really nice. Um. Super sweet when we get donations from you guys, and that one just surprised us today. Thank you so much, Judy, for your very charitable heart. Also, I'm looking forward to doing your floors. I've already, like, amped up my research because I do that. I have to research everything for a long, long time. She's getting her very own she shed, and... Kind of jealous. She's getting her own she shed resin shop and it's coming along quite nicely.
So I have to say it in all the videos, make sure you measure your parts of your resin appropriately. Our, most of our resins are one to one, so it's equal parts, half and half to resin to hardener. All of our resins are one to one. Lies. Because we used the one that was two to one. The flooring, I mean the, yeah. The flooring one was one to one. Remember? So, uh, oh, yeah, flooring one was. Well, that's the stuff. These, uh, the concrete people that sent us, the concrete epoxy they sent us is, they sent it to you with just the right amount on each one and you just pour it into itself. Mm hmm. It was definitely so there's very no easy. measuring, which is really nice. But you got to use it all at once, so. I'll link that video. Dun, dun. And it's really nice. It's a really different epoxy, like, it really, it, it, it really manipulates the paint and it sets like glass. Like it, it's, it's really, uh, real smooth, uh, epoxy. But a lot, a lot of people are asking us lately about the smell of resin, like the VOC, like how bad is it? Because we have some that have like health problems where they, that is so Thick. Like, I don't even know if we should put that much. Like, I'm well, we'll just put that much and then we'll... Give it a drop. So, um, the smell that's in this stuff. Our, I think the least smelliest one that we've used was Envirotex, followed by this... That, that didn't take a lot at a all. A little bitty drop. I didn't even... I just let it drop off of this. So, um, the countertop epoxy that we're using today is the second least smelly. And then the one we've been using lately, uh, the Promarine, it has a little bit more of a smell, but honestly, if I were standing this far away from where Jeff is mixing up resin, I wouldn't be able to smell it. It's only slightly noticeable. Not even almost enough to mention, but we want to give you guys the full experience of these materials, so I have to share. The worst smelly one was the flooring epoxy. Because you could spill that and it wouldn't come out. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. I know, I just want to keep some because I want you to do the lay like a line of clear and then the white over it on some part. You always like to have some left over of this stuff, don't you? Yeah, this might be too much for that, for this. I really like that red one that we did. But I painted it red, didn't I? Did I paint that canvas red? You or did, black? and you hated it. It was not a matching red. Oh, that's right. I just hope this doesn't turn pink. Well, but it might look cool. Just dark stuff. We'll see. And we prepped this canvas according to this tutorial right here. I know a lot of people don't like pouring on canvases because it tends to dip in the middle and we prep it in such a way that it reduces it. I don't know that you can ever like completely ax out it dipping in the middle, but sometimes we don't mind because then your piece can change and you just wake up every day to a surprise. And you know what, Be That one that we did, that the sherbet looking one. You take that off. Yes. I always end up getting... Oh, I guess I've got that on my hands. I don't know how I even did that. It's gonna, I don't know, it's on the side of this jar too. It's gonna all be in there anyways. What was I saying? Oh, that piece you did, the, the sherbet one. 
ice cream sunset or ice cream galaxy. Mm -hmm. It was really neat the way it separated because, oh, that piece is here. Because um, when it separated, it showed that blue. So right. it kind of worked with it. So let's start with this dark. And I've been wanting to do, um, you notice in the, the last two videos, it's this puddle pour and it runs oh. and then it just kind of drags all the other colors with it and then that's those really crazy long cells long cells this is one of those pieces this is a little different I love love anything metallic New take on puddle pouring right yeah. here. Seen it here first, folks. I don't know how this is gonna. My goal is to be able just to pour it <laughs> and just tilt it one time and let it run and then stop. And I'm just trying to figure out how I'm gonna achieve that. Well, that's what we're here to do. Oh, I wanted to put tape on the sides. That's what I wanted to do. Still use that aluminum tape. Yeah. The cells are already popping out. Look at that. And there's another way that we are gonna to try to do a pour, which has never been done. Um, Let's take you guys out of here. Let's go for a ride. That wheel might be a little bit much. I don't know, it's kind of gone. It is. I feel like there's not enough. I would almost leave that and work with the negative space. I know, I'm, I'm literally just gonna let this all run. And then I'm gonna take this white. And just go right here. That's a pretty true red. It is very red. A great suggestion, Laura. This red turned out to be the red that a red that we could actually work with. I mean, you saw how much white we put on it, and it's still like red. Look at this gold popping up. Pink, 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 pink. This is real time. I'm staying on here so that you guys can see that it's real time. Just pink, 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 pink. Not even any heat on it. It's just. I'm coming out. What are we doing up here? I was just trying to cover up that red. It would have been nice to just have. That's really neat. I'm sad that the whale is gone. I'm going to tilt it this way and just see what we got. That looks so neat though. We just keep putting heat on that gold and it just keeps popping through. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I love it when there's movement. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's such odd movement though. Like usually this gold looks almost grainy and it's like very silky. Yeah. I don't like that. The 
Babe. There's, there's red underneath there. That's why I put that there. I'm scrape the red off. You can make more white too. There's some left over. Put some white on it before you blow it, or no? That looks awesome. I was gonna say I'm kind of bummed that the whale has. Could you imagine doing marble with whale? Oh man, that looks great. I don't know, I like it. It's very simple. What? There's like a piece in there. No, it's like it's doing it. It's just a pattern. There's nothing in it. Because mm -hmm. I thought these over here had something in it. I hope you keep the white ratio on this side. So it balances. I like it. Mm -hmm. I think that's like somebody's like, like they're like, oh my God, those are my colors in my home. I like it. It's got to be the shortest video ever. Oh no, 22 minutes. I need them to see this. Is that like looks like just red, just gold? These are not holes, like divots. They're they're just they're cells. 